Welcome back. Today we're diving into the one of the most crucial steps in any construction project. It's about getting started on the right foot. And in this lesson, we'll be covering the assessment and need stage, as well as the invitation to tender. And this is really about the foundational aspects any project needs for success, because we know what happens if teams don't have clear information from the start. We get all of the miscommunication, delays, increased costs. No project can really afford to have that. So in this section, we'll cover how ISO 19650 helps eliminate those issues. And we'll give you the tools to manage it with a checklist and how to get started off on the right foot. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Let's do that. Do you remember that project when we worked on that hospital? We thought we had all the details in place, but then we had to realize that we were working off the wrong version of the requirements. I, so the fact that you bring that up, I knew that you were going to bring that up because I've seen this before, but the, the project was such a nightmare. The fact that we didn't have the right information to start off with, it just meant that we were creating a whole bunch of wasteful content and not actually getting to the requirements that the owner wanted. So yeah, we when you don't have the right information at the start, it really does cause a ripple effect through the rest of the project. Exactly. So that happens when the teams don't exactly know what information is required at the different stages or different purposes. Yes, that's right. Think about it. If we don't have a clear organizational information requirements or project information requirement upfront, we are setting ourselves up for the trouble later. Most of the time, team waste time backtracking and trying to fix unclear or incorrect information. And the, sometimes the project faces delays because contractors may misunderstand the scope without a clear invitation to tender process. Budget overruns become almost inevitable when we are forced to rework things later on. So without a structured assessment and tendering process, the project schedule, budget and quality are all at risk. Yep, absolutely. And this is where ISO 19650 steps in to save the day, because the standard really provides us this structured framework to ensure that you gather the right information from the start. And from the assessment and needs stage, it really helps us define what information the client or the organization requiring these things, what do they need for their decision making? And establishing the OIR, the organizational requirements, and then the project requirements, it really helps us to make sure that the right questions are asked from the beginning of the project and going through that invitation to tender process with the exchange information requirements clearly defined, the whole workflow becomes smoother. So teams know exactly what is in the scope and what they need to do in order to provide an accurate bid. So before moving to the next step, it's important to understand, according to ISO 19650, the critical tasks that need to be carried out during that invitation to tender phase. These are primarily responsibilities for the appointing party, the client, the person that's paying the bill. They're the ones that should be defining this early on. And a lot of the time that is through assistance by a consultant or somebody that's done this many times before. So let's break down the key responsibilities of the appointing party during the assessment and meeting stage. These steps to secure that your project stays on track and aligned with the ISO 19650 standard. First of all, you need to appoint an information manager. As you mentioned, this person will oversee the entire information management process, making sure everything complies with ISO 19650 from the beginning. Next, you will need to establish the project information requirements. These define what information is required at different stages to meet the project's operational and strategic goals. Then, it's essential to set project delivery milestones. These are the key decision points throughout the project where specific information must be delivered, helping track progress and guide decision making. After that, you will need to establish a project information standard this step sets procedures for how information will be produced, named, stored, and shared to keep everything consistent and accurate. Yep, and following that, it's important to define the information production methods and procedures. This is ensuring everyone follows the same approach for producing, sharing, and also validating that project information. You'll also want to gather the reference information. So anything that is going to be a shared resource, putting it all in the same place and having all of these relevant documents in that same place that everyone can understand where to get them. Make sure that everyone is up to date with the right information and they don't have to go hunting for things to make their bidding process more clear and, and simple and on point with what the owner wants. So that common place is the common data environment. Setting it up is, is also, of course, a critical step. It creates a centralized platform for managing, storing, and sharing all that project information and making collaboration easier and most, more efficient. You also need to establish your project information protocols. These are the clear rules of how information will flow across the project, who creates it, who validates it, 
and who has to share it. That's it, exactly. And we've done all of the hard work to boil that down into a checklist. So remember, all of those steps are available inside of the template, inside Planoly for you to just go through and check off. It's got a lot more detail on each one, and there are even some videos embedded that will describe exactly what to do and help your teams become heroes in implementing and become so so compliant to ISO 19650, it becomes really easy and it becomes naturally part of their workflow. Once we've set up this groundwork and we have gone through this process, the appointing party or the client, that's now their responsibility to manage that invitation to tender process. Let's go through some of the key responsibilities during these steps. First, the appointing party needs to establish the exchange information requirements. This document outlines exactly what information contractors and consultants need to provide as part of the tender process, assuring there is no confusion about what's required. Then, next, you will need to assemble all the reference information and shared resources. This includes project guidelines, standards, and any other documents that the tendering parties will need to review before they prepare their bids. Then, it's crucial to establish clear tender response requirements and evaluate evaluation criteria. By specifying exactly how the tenders will be evaluated, the appointing party ensures a transparent and fair process where everyone knows what information is needed. Then finally, the appointing party must compile all the invitation to tender documents. So this package includes the EIR, PIR, reference information and evaluation criteria. Once assembled, it's sent to the potential contractors and consultants to guide them in preparing accurate bids. Yep, and out of all of these activities, there's lots of acronyms, but the most critical ones are the organizational information requirements, the project requirements, the asset requirements, and then all encompassing into the exchange information requirements. It's a structured process. We've got all of the checklists so you can go through them and understand the right questions to ask to make sure that you get the right answers and the, the right set of resources in an exchange information requirements set. So the OIR, the PIR, the AIR, and the EIR form that set of documents that make sure that we go through the assessment of need and the tender phase in a structured way. So first, let's take a look at the OIR, the Organizational Information Requirements. These are set by the appointing party and define the high-level information needed to support strategic decision-making for the organization. Next, the Project Information Requirements, PIR, come into play. These are based on the OIR and outline the specific information needed at different stages of the project. The PIR makes sure that the project's operational goals are going to be met. From there, we move to the asset information requirement. These define the data needed to manage and operate the asset over its life cycle. Both the PIR and AIR contribute to shape the detailed information requirements. And AIR also specifies the requirement for asset information model. And finally, all of this contributes to the exchange information requirement. The EI specifies exactly what information needs to be exchanged between the parties during the project. And the AIR outlines the specific data and information exchanges necessary for the project, including when and how this information will be delivered, shared, etc. It also specifies the requirements for project information model, which is then contributes to the asset information model during the handover phase. Yeah, and this, this all may seem very confusing with lots of acronyms, as I said, but we'll go through these, every single one of them, one by one in a series of videos as well. And to make it even easier, we show you how you can get access to all of these templates directly inside of Planoly. So with one click, we can start to establish the organizational, project, and exchange information requirements, all perfectly aligned to the ISO 19650 standards. And if you're defining the assets, we integrate with a Kobe planner to detail out exactly what has to happen, the processes and the workflows that we need to make sure that it's a smooth and efficient workflow. Everything in the structured set of the documents can be completed simply and collaboratively across all of the different teams. And we can even in the scope see the asset information requirements as detailed requirements for every single asset. And as we mentioned, here's the checklist that makes it super simple. So you can pick exactly which tasks you're responsible for and understand how to go through them, how to accomplish them and how to become compliant. So with all of those inbuilt checklists and templates, you can really get a head start, all of that project information in one place. And you can even invite all of the other tenderers as they go through that bidding process, that appointment process. And we'll take you through more of that in more detailed videos next. All you've got to do is remember 
Don't plan late. Plan early. With Planally. We'll see you in the next one.